Hello everyone. Professor Ashwini Merkar is here before you to deliver a lecture on project management subject. Up to now, I have delivered lectures on topics introduction of project management, communication skill and management skill and in this topic we are going to discuss about project planning. In this topic, we are going to discuss about basic concepts in development of project plan. And it includes project planning, choice of technology, work task, estimating activity duration, estimating resource requirement for work activities, Defining precedence relationship among activities, coding system and network methods to schedule activities. Now let's see all these things in detail. First of all, let us understand what is project planning. Planning is the thought process to determine the work of the project. Let's see how the project plan is developed. It includes scope planning. It is to determine the feasibility of the project according to customer's need and decide the line of action accordingly. Also, in this stage, project manager has to think about how much resources and time will be required for the project. Risk planning is the thought given for more precise planning that is for the work to be completed in time one must also think about the risk that is what can go wrong during the project work such as if the construction is unable to obtain resources in time such as material resources due to transportation problems or some other problems. Project manager or the contractor must be able to find other alternative for making resources available so that the work does not get affected and also ultimately we can avoid the delay of activities. Now scheduling is the actual process of allocation of time for the activities by means of time length required for the activity and to allocate the resources along the timeline of the activities. After the planning process one has to give the quality check and it is done by checking the progress status of work and taking corrective actions during the execution of work so that the quality of work does not get affected. So all these things are required to be thought during the development of project plan. Choice of technology is also one of the important factors while planning. Choice of technology is done according to the availability of time and budget. Let's understand these things through examples. In this image, we can see the work is done by manpower. If we have less budget available and we have more time for completion of project then we can use manpower resources as the work can be done in less amount by using manpower resources. In this image 
we can see the work can be done through machineries. Now, if we have adequate budget and less time to complete project, we can refer machinery for doing work. So, through these examples, we can see the excavation is done by manpower and excavation done through machinery, which makes the difference in time and difference in budget. Now, the choice of technology also includes types of labor. There are types of labor such as skilled labors and unskilled labors. When we will refer unskilled labor, we will require more time to complete the work and we will require less cost to do that work. And if we prefer skilled labors, we will require less time and we can achieve the quality of work but the cost will be high. Choice of technology also includes about the techniques used for project work. They are, for example, here in this image we can see the painting is done by brush. And in this image we can see that painting is applied with roller. So the technique used of roller will account less time than the technique used for painting with brush. So the techniques also differs the time and also differs in budget. The modern techniques requires higher cost and less time and the traditional techniques requires more time and less cost. Now, work task. Work task is the allocation of work and it includes the activities. The activities is the subdivision of project task and the project is the set of activities and work task is the subdivision of activity. So here we can say that activities are the part of the project and work task is the part of the activity. Estimating activity duration. Now after discussing about planning and choice of technology, we have to calculate the time for the activity and how it is calculated. Let's see which factors we have to consider for calculating the time for activity. It includes type of work. If the work is tedious to do, that is, it is time consuming. For example, measurement of work will require less time than excavation of work. So, this example makes us understand that the time differs according to the type of work. Now, content of work. If one of the it is one of the factor to decide the time of work. For example, to dig one pit will require less time than the digging of two pits. So the content of work includes the time required for the completion of work. Also the time differs according to how the work is done. The time of work can be manipulated by increasing the number of workers we can complete the work 
in less time and if we have less number of workers we will require more time to complete the work or by using the latest techniques we can manipulate the time by using modern techniques we will require less time and by using traditional techniques we will require more time or with the help of choice of technology as all these things as we have discussed in previous slides so the estimating of time includes the factors of type of work content of work and how the work is done now how to calculate the time for the resources or according to the resource requirement that is called as estimating resource requirement for work activities resource requirement is estimated according to the precedence relationship that is the relationship between the two activities how they are linked with each other such as whether the activities are carried out independently in sequence or the activities can be carried out simultaneously or the activities might need sharing of equipment all these factors depends on uh, estimating the resources now human resources is are estimated as number of workers required and the selection of skilled or unskilled type of workers equipments the type of tools techniques and machineries are identified and selected according to the type of work or the way in which the work is to be carried out if we have to Uh, do the work fast we can use machineries and if we have uh, ample of time we can use modern techniques so thus the equipments also includes in estimating the resource requirement materials it is the requirement for a particular activity and it includes the type of material required for that activity which is to be decided according to the quality to be achieved as per the standards set for the project so material resources are also the factor for estimating the resources now last but not least is the financial resource and which is the most important element it is the requirement of each and every activity and it includes the total amount required to carry that activity so all these factors are required for estimating the resources defining precedence relationship among activities means sequencing of activities precedence relation between activities signify that activities must take place in a particular sequence it has different implications for scheduling of activities that is some activities are sequenced one after another as the second activity cannot be done before the first activity that is it depends on the nature of work for example in construction work foundation or plinth work has to be done first before superstructure let's take another example of interior designing work white washing has to be done before applying paint and the paint cannot be applied until and unless the white washing is completed and cured so these examples makes us understand how the 
sequencing of activities are done one after another and as the second activity cannot be started until and unless first activity is completed while some activities can be done simultaneously for example electrification work and plumbing work can be carried out simultaneously so that we can save the time for completion of project work also some activities need a common equipment so they need to be sequenced on the basis of time or cost analysis that is equipment can be shared by sharing the time this is done for minimizing the cost or if we have adequate budget but less time then the equipment can be hired independently so in this way we can sequence the activities now the diagrammatic presentation of activities is explained in this example we have taken about painting process here we can see the first activity is surface preparation then second is primer coat after completion of surface preparation we can start with the primer coat and then the third activity is putty coat and fourth is second primer coat until and unless the putty coat is dried we cannot go for second primer coat then last is the finishing coat until and unless we complete with the second primer coat and it is dried sufficiently we cannot start with the finishing coat in this way the sequencing of activity is done here the circle represents the events that is the activities the type of activities and the arrow represents the duration required to complete that activity coding system coding system is used in project works to identify the activities it is used for identifying activities by giving color code in network diagrams or graphs also it is used to identify group of people in an organization numbering system it is the system adapted to provide a numbering system to replace verbal description of items in short coding system helps us to reduce complexity this codes helps us to reduce the length or complexity of information the coding system is the most important factor considered in project work to simplify the work activities here in this example of coding system we can see the graph shown of student submission work in this graph we can analyze the data by color code and the data analysis can be done through the percentage of work here in this part we can see that 82% of students have completed the submissions and it is indicated by the color code blue and 32% of students have doing the submissions and it is included in orange color and gray color represents the students have just started doing their work and it includes 14% and yellow ochre color represents that the submissions are not done by the students and it accounts 12% so in this way data analysis 
is visualized visualized by using coding system. Numbering system. In this example, we have taken the electrical layout plan for which the legend is provided besides the plan in which the number of switches and the total number of connections to the switches are shown. This is done to avoid the complexity of verbal description in the plan and to avoid the complexity in presentation and avoiding it from making shabby. So, this understands about the number, numbering system. Also, for reducing complexity, we can use dress codes in organizations to identify the group of people. In this example, we can see that the students are provided the dress code and the teachers are given another dress code to analyze the students and teachers. So this helps us in identification of group of people. Now, how to calculate the actual time required for the project is done through network methods to schedule activities and they are critical path method abbreviated as CPM and program evaluation and review technique abbreviated as PERT. CPM is a network method which includes a series of activities that determines the earliest time by which the complete project is done. After drawing the diagram of CPM for activities of the project, the longest path that we will find in the diagram will be the critical path method. This is known as critical path method. And PERT is the network method that helps us to know the average time estimate of project. And it is calculated by the formula O plus 4 ml plus P in which O represents optimistic value, ml is most likely and P is prismatic value. This formula helps us to calculate the average time required for the project and this technique is used in research and development project. CPM gives us the precise time calculation and PERT gives us the average time calculation. Now let's see how to determine the critical path. In this diagram we can see there are number of paths. This is the path 1 which is A, T, H, J and here the time is given to complete that activity. Hence the time required for this path is calculated as the time for first activity A for A is 1, for second activity that is for B is 4, for third activity that is for H is 6. We can say it in days form, 6 days required. Then fourth activity that is J is 3 days. And the total time required for this path is the 14 days. In the same way, the other path calculations are done. The second path is P, E, H, J. And here we can see the time allotted for each activity. And they are estimated 
here B will require 2 days, E will require 5 days, F will require 6 days, H will require 6 days and J will require 3 days. So, total estimate required for the path B, E, H, J that is the second part is 16 days and here the third part is B, F, J and the time required is for B 2 days, for F 4 days and for J 3 days. So total time required for third part is 9 days and fourth part is C, G, I, J. Time required for activity C is 3 days, for G is 6 days, I 2 days and J 3 days. So total time required for the path C, G, I, J is 14 days. So through these paths we can see the longest path is the path 2. So the longest path in the diagram is called as critical path and here the critical path is path 2 that is B E H J which counts 16 days and which is the highest in these paths. Now, what is the difference between CPM technique and PER technique? CPM uses activity oriented network and PER uses event oriented network. The duration of activity in CPM may be estimated with a fair degree of accuracy and estimation of time for activities in PER technique are not so accurate and definite. Hence, the CPM network diagrams are extensively used in construction projects as in construction projects they require the precise timing required to complete the project work. And PERT is used in research and development projects, particularly projects of non-repetitive nature that is, these projects are not done previously and we just need to know how the average time can be calculated in such types of projects per technique is used. Determinist concept is used in CPM method and probabilistic model concept is used in PERT method. That is, when we have to determine the concepts more accurately to use CPM methods and where we don't have the references or um, we are just listing out the project activities and trying to know how the, these can be done and we just need to obtain the Tentative analysis of work that is the probabilistic model concept. CPM method can control both time and cost during planning. And PERT is just the basic tool for planning. In CPM, that is the critical path method, cost optimization is given more importance. And in PERT, it is assumed that cost varies directly with time. Thank you for listening to me.